Well, I am here today on Cheyenne Country with a beautiful young lady and talented, Miss Templeton Thompson. Templeton, so nice to see you. Thank you. Nice to see you. First thing I've got to say is I love your name. Thank you. Now, who came up with that? Well, um, that's a really neat story. My dad's best friend yeah. in Vietnam, hmm. his name was Don Templeton. Yeah. He's a Marine. He passed away hmm. serving in Vietnam. My wow. dad's a Marine as well. Yeah. And Don never found the woman of his dreams, but mm. when he apparently talked about when he would find that woman, he wanted to have a little girl and he wanted to name her Templeton. Wow. So, in honor of Don, my parents named me Templeton. That's a great story. So, that's, that's why. Have you ever been to Washington at the, uh, I have. and you've seen really his name? Really heavy. I've actually taken the piece of paper that they'll give you and you can no kidding. etch the name and um, I framed it for my dad one Christmas and I thought I'd really messed up when I gave him that present. He cried his yeah. eyes out as you can imagine when I, he received it. I have to be it, careful. I mean, that touches me. me. <laughs> like it was a big, it wow. was a very special wow. thing between me and my That's dad. Great. So That's great. I'm really proud of him. And you, young lady, you're not only a singer, you're a great songwriter and Thanks. a lot of people have, major artists have recorded your songs, but you. when did you find that music was a fire inside of you that needed to be let out? Oh, I like that. That's <laughs> cool. Thank you. Um, I think I always had that. Yeah, but when do you recognize it? I think I recognized that I had to go do that and follow that, yeah. at least just try to follow it and see right. what happened. Honestly, it was when I was in college, because oh. I, was, I was on track to go to law school, and yeah. I took those LSAT tests oh, and yeah. all those things, and I I've was... Done it. You've done it? <laughs> yeah. Okay, because I come from a lot of my family members on my mom's side yeah. are, are attorneys and right. great at it. They're amazing, and I kind of was getting sort of it was suggested you'd right. be a really good lawyer yeah. why don't you do that <laughs> and music is kind of you know you never know why don't you right. be a lawyer and right. it was like um i read an article when i was at the university of virginia that's where i was studying and yeah. um about trisha yearwood working as an intern at mtm records right. in the a and r department yeah right i, I think. heard that yeah. yeah and i didn't even understand what a and r meant and all yeah. that stuff but i read that article and i thought well, dang, maybe if I go down to Nashville, if I get a gig yeah. as an intern, yeah. my family will feel as though there's something safe to go do. Right. And then we'll kind of see what happens from there. And so I interned at Arista Records oh, yeah. and under a wonderful man named Joe Tassi. He was in A&R at the right. time. And, right. Um, I got fired from being an intern. <laughs> Did you ever learn Tim what? Did you totally ever, fired me. Oh, Tim Dubois, yeah. <laughs> he did. Did you ever learn Love what A and R means? Yeah, artist and repertoire. Yeah, you that's know, good. I I started digging in and understanding, you know, right. but it was still just over my head, and I had never, I had never experienced anything like that, yeah. and it was a really weird thing too because I basically, you know, I went there as an artist, yeah. not a together artist at right. all. Right. Um, but that's what I wanted to do. Yeah. I didn't want to work at a label, but I just thought, well, Trisha Yearwood did it. Yeah. And she's like one of my most favorite ever artists ever. So do, I'm going to go be like Trisha. Do you realize, I mean, we're in 120 million households wow. with this show. Right. Do you realize how many people are sitting at home that want to be an artist and they're listening very closely to the oh, okay. steps you took? <laughs> don't so, do what I did. <laughs> don't get fired. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't do that. No, actually, that, that's a good Good plan because yeah. anytime I've talked to anybody to cut that wants to come to Nashville to be a performer or a writer, I say always get a gig that can pay the bills before you ever come. Right. And then come and then you can pursue your dream. When yeah. did you realize that writing was a real passion of yours? Or that you had a gift for that? Oh, that's kind of you to say that I have a gift. I don't know what I'm doing. That's very <laughs> kind. Um, you know, I don't know because it, that all really happened after I moved to Nashville because yeah. I'd never really written a song right. um, and I was so green as grass. Yeah. I mean, I, I learned how to sing harmonies listening to Kim Ritchie singing harmony with Rodney Foster yeah. on his Del Rio album because yeah. that was one of the albums that was coming out of Arista So you Arista hear harmonies really well. Now I'm better at yeah. it. Um, well, you're in demand uh, in, in doing a lot of backup work on there, recordings. Well, I mean, being really honest, like mm -hmm. right now, no, not so much. And that's okay. I've yeah. done a lot of things. I've been blessed to sing with Reba when yeah. she cut my song. I got right. to go in the studio at Starstruck and sing with yeah, her. Reba who? I'm I, kidding. I know, <laughs> that, that cowgirl okay. redhead from Oklahoma. I'm going to sing with you again. I'm just saying this specifically to you, Reba. I know it's going to happen. We're going to be Reba. horseback singing together. I saw Reba at, the restaurant, at a restaurant downtown the other day. Did you? And, oh, she's yeah. so she's nice. A, she's a sweetheart. Oh, yeah. my God. She was so nice to me the yeah. day I went in. And, uh, you know, we didn't talk about horses. 
I was so nervous yeah. hanging out with like one of my heroes in yeah. music and I didn't even speak the first word about horses, which is not like me. <laughs> no, I mean, I could talk to you horses. all day long about horses. No, yeah. But yeah, I kind of, you have to watch. But we're going to get into that so, as yeah. we get toward your video because mm -hmm. we're going to air your video right after the interview. Oh, thank you. And this video is absolutely awesome. It was uh, uh, my uh, business partner, co-producer, Harrison Tyner of the show, I actually found your video oh. and sent it to me and said, what do you yeah. think? We talked about it with our with our uh, producer, uh, uh, Vince Pinkerton, okay. and got your video. You were so gracious to let us uh, have yeah. it to air on the show. Thank and then, you. And then Harrison met you, and uh, at least over the phone or cool. email. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We've been, yeah, 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 yep, exactly. We're going to get course. down to the well, horses. Well, we go, we go way back now. But I've got, yeah. We're family <laughs> now. about 15 days. <laughs> uh, but, but I have a question. Uh, I've never met anybody that is right-handed and plays the guitar left-handed. Mm. I saw you playing mm. and you were playing left-handed. Mm. How did you accomplish that? Did somebody teach you how to play it left-handed when you first started? Mm, uh, accident. Oh, really? Taught me how to play left-handed guitar. <laughs> no you kidding. got it. Yeah, horse-related wow. kind of thing and um, very long story short or endless like my dear sweet neighbor Jerry yeah. says, Tempe, you can make a long story <laughs> endless and I can. I'm a talker. Um, I come from a long line of talkers. But yeah. long story short, when I was 16, yeah. um, I was working on a polo field yeah. in Maryland mm -hmm. and being the very conscientious 16 year old young woman that yeah. I was. Yeah. Um, I thought one of the polo ponies in the particular polo string of the gentleman I was working for, I thought one of the horses was loose. Uh. And so I thought, oh, well, I'll go time to the trailer. Right. Well, no one thought to tell me that he could not be tied. Um, some horses, you know, depending on maybe he'd been abused some right. point in his life, he right. just didn't do well with pressure. Like he didn't, mm -hmm. he didn't, yeah, scared him to death. Mm -hmm. So when I went to tie him up behind the stock trailer, you know, the bars on the stock trailer, right? Yeah. I went to put my hand up and my hand wasn't even stuck in anything. It was yeah. just up next to the bar and he felt the tiniest, that little tiny bit wow. of pressure and as opposed to giving to it, it scared him. Bless mm. his heart, his name was Vali Quattro. I think yeah. about him all the time. Yeah. He was an Argentinian polo pony and wow. he freaked out. Yeah. I freaked out. So I'm pulling, he's pulling, yeah. 1,200 pounds, pulling yeah. to like 100 probably at that time mm. w with me completely soaking wet, I was probably mm. 100 pounds. Yeah. But I had my high school ring on my ring finger. Oh, wow. And in all of that, um, you can kind of, I don't know if you guys can see. Oh, yeah. But, um, so this finger, the ring was embedded mm, in my gosh. left finger. This one got all cattywampus. Yeah. And what's amazing to me is our farrier, the wonderful man, Cowboy Bob, who was doing our horse's feet at yeah. the time, he also did a lot of polo ponies mm -hmm. and everybody around me, I remember them just freaking out, understandably so, yeah. probably blood going sure. everywhere. It was not pretty. Yeah. And I'm jumping up and down and freaking right. out. He grabbed me, I remember, and he threw his shirt around my hand to stop the bleeding to help. And then he grabbed nippers, and you know what nippers are, if you're like familiar with trimming horses hoods. Oh yeah, the, sure. Right? Yeah. And they're big things. These are not surgical tiny little ends. Yeah. These are big nippers. Right. He took those nippers and got that ring out of my finger oh my without gosh. doing any more damage. Wow. He saved my hand. I know oh it to gosh. my soul. I love you, Cowboy Bob. <laughs> totally did. And eight surgeries later, wow. that's what she looks like. So like my wedding ring, because I'm very happily married yeah. to my wonderful partner in crime, Mr. Sam Gay. Yeah. <laughs> so my wedding ring, if I were to wear it over here, it yeah. would just fall off right. because that finger is stuck like that and it's missing a piece because eight surgeries wow. later I wound up with an infection in my finger, osteomyelitis, more surgery, a lot oh of micro surgeries. So it's out a long of, story. That's out why. Out of necessity That's why. Yes. you became a left handed guitar yes, player. And I heard you. It's I mean you're really, excellent. Oh the, 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 well you're with very the uh, kind. and your husband is a great oh, guitar player. I heard him Thank too. You. Yeah, it's really you. nice. He's phenomenal. And you love horses, and even even uh, uh, with a negative encounter like that, uh, oh, yeah. you're a big horse fan, and oh, uh, yeah. and thus the song uh, uh, that that uh, we're going to play in just a moment. Cool. Tell us the title and a little bit about the song, and then we're going to go into it. Okay. Well, the long title "When I Get That Pony Road," but I've been yeah. saying "Get That Pony Road." Right. Um, and that song was inspired. Actually, because of an amazing horseman named Buck Branneman. If you've yeah. ever seen the movie The Horse Whisperer yeah, yeah. and watched that, sure. um, the gentleman who Nicholas Evans was following around to model that 
Tom Booker character actor who mm -hmm. Robert Redford plays yeah. is Buck Brandman. Oh, okay. And he has since become a friend and just such a inspiration for mm -hmm. me as a horsewoman. So long and short, uh, one of his books, I think this was in his book, Believe, yeah. he has two amazing books. And he says something about the consequences of a fast turn. Mm -hmm. And so myself and my husband, Sam, sat down to write a song with our friend, Jason Green. Mm -hmm. It's M. Jason Green, so we always yeah. go, mm, Jason Green. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Jason, I love you. <laughs> he writes um, and has written He's incredible, written, worked with Clay Walker for many years. Yeah. He's one of my favorite people. So we tried to write the title Consequences of a Fast Turn and it yeah. just, it didn't want to write it. It just wasn't happening. And right. then somehow somebody in the room, I don't remember who did yeah. now, we're all in it together, said, when I get that pony road. Yeah. And that's, that's where it's how it came to be. And it's just about, you get bucked off, you <laughs> get back on and by God, you ride. <laughs> but this, this is a great video and a wonderful song. I know you're going to enjoy it from Temple to Thompson. Here is When I Get That Pony Road. Guessing wasn't such a perfect landing Yeah, I'm still alive, not sure how I survived It was a hell of a ride till it ended I guess that's what you get when you leave You don't always end up on your feet Oh, there's easy ways I could go Consequence 